So here we are, and here's the church calendar. And you can see that we are past Christmas, past Epiphany, and we are at the very last week of the green and growing Sundays before we enter into the, this purple time, this time of Lent, this time of getting ready for the mystery of Easter. So next week when we get together, the color will have changed. There was once someone who said such wonderful things and did such amazing things. Some of them are in the story. He did such amazing things that people began to follow him. And as they followed him, they wondered who he was. One of the times he said, I am the light. Let's enjoy the light. I see the love of God in you, the light of Christ comes shining through, and I am blessed to be with you, O holy child of God. But this light didn't stay in that one place so long ago. He changed the light, so it could be in all places and in all times, so it could be with us here today. Watch as I change the light. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Ooh, can you see? Against the black background, I'm wondering. It goes up and it's filling this room. I'll push it out so it can be in the whole circle of godly play. So that wherever we are in godly play, this light will be with us. And when we leave godly play, the light will go with us too. So you ready for a story? Great. So we are, we have been telling this story, the greatest parable. And this story is getting really big. It's getting so big that I'm gonna have to change the screen and you won't be able to see my head because I need to have more space to show you the whole story. So I'm gonna change. So I will not, you will not be able to see my head till after. So we have enough room for the story. So we need an underlay. So today I'm going to take the one from the Great Pearl. Because as we know, this story is bigger than any underlay in the Godly Playroom. But this will do for today. The Annunciation. The Transfiguration. Oops, I've got them the wrong way around. And the Resurrection. These three moments of God's presence are like the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. And yet, the story continues to go on. In fact, it's still going on in many ways today. So here's the part where the angel Gabriel is telling Mary that she's going to be the mother of God and then a cloud overshadowed her, and the baby was born. The baby grew up, became a man. When he was about 30 years old, he started his ministry. You remember this story from last week, where he went back to the synagogue in his hometown, and the people rejected him because they were blind to who he really was.
Jesus began to call his followers, starting out with fishers beside the Sea of Galilee. Here's Jesus teaching and blessing. You can see the crowd that's there. That's that crowd asking him who he really was. Here, Jesus is feeding the 5,000. And here, Jesus is talking about the law and the Sabbath day. All these stories and many others happened in the north, in the part called Galilee, where Nazareth and the Sea of Galilee were and still are today. But Jesus's time in Galilee was coming to an end. So he took three of his disciples up a mountain, Peter, James, and John, and Jesus appeared in blinding light with Moses and Elijah, and a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice said, this is my beloved son, listen to him. When the disciples looked again, only Jesus was standing there, and Jesus took his disciples down the mountain, and they, he turned his face towards Jerusalem for the last time. And today's story is some of the things that happened on the way. Jesus and his disciples walked south towards Judea. They probably took the pilgrim's path along the Jordan River. And then they headed west and into the city of Jericho one of the oldest cities in the world. As they entered Jericho, a blind man sitting beside the side of the road called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Now, people around tried to quiet him and tried to calm him, but Jesus turned and said to his disciples, call him. So the disciples called him. The blind man's name was Bartimaeus, and Bartimaeus stood up and carefully and cautiously found his way towards Jesus' voice. And Jesus said to Bartimaeus, what do you want? Bartimaeus replied, I want to see. Jesus said, go now on your way, your faith has made you well. But Bartimaeus was so overjoyed, he didn't go on his way, but he followed along with Jesus and the others because now he could truly see. As Jesus was one walking around Judea, crowds of people followed him. And often parents brought their children to him, children to him to be blessed. Here you can see Jesus noticing a mother and her two children walking down the path towards him. And the disciples seem to be looking at something else. One of the times when parents brought the children to Jesus to be blessed, the disciples stopped them and tried to send them away because I guess they thought maybe they would bother Jesus. But Jesus rebuked his disciples. He was indignant, it's told in the Bible. He was angry. This was not right. He said to his disciples, always let the children come to me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And then he went to the children and put his hands on them and blessed them. Another time when the children came, 
Jesus said, well, when you welcome children, you welcome me and the Father who sent me. Welcoming children is a way to know God. Other people were in the crowd following him, and by this time, there were often Pharisees and Sadducees in the group. They cared a great deal about the Torah, the law of Moses, and they were wanting to make sure that Jesus was following all the rules and the stories of the Torah. One of those, these times, a lawyer asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? Now, this was a trick question, because of course we know that the law of Moses had 10 commandments and they were all very important. But Jesus said, this is the way to think about the law. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. And the second is like this. Love your neighbor as yourself. In these two commandments lie all the law and the prophets. There was a scribe there that day, an expert in the Torah, and he said, he has spoken truly. So the Sadducees and the Pharisees went away that day, feeling very impressed with what Jesus had said. When Jesus was walking in the area around Jericho, he and his disciples also met a man named Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus was a tax collector, and his job was to take money from his neighbors and give it to the Roman government and keep some of it for himself. Now, Zacchaeus was a very rich man, but he was hated by everyone who knew him. One day, he heard that Jesus was going to be coming and passing nearby in Jericho. Now, Zacchaeus was not a tall person, so he climbed up in a sycamore tree so that he could see Jesus as he was passing by with all the crowd around him. Something called Zacchaeus. To be there. So later that day, as Jesus and the crowd came along the street in Jericho, Jesus looked up and saw Zacchaeus in the sycamore tree and said, Come down quickly. Today we are going to eat at your house. Zacchaeus quickly ran, climbed down out of the tree and started to lead the way to his house. And as he did, Something changed in Zacchaeus, and he realized what he really needed to do. So he gave away half of all he had to feed the poor, and for every piece of money that he had taken from his neighbors, he gave back four. Jesus said, truly, a miracle has come to this house today. So later that day, they sat around the table at Zacchaeus's house, enjoying the being with each other and enjoying the food, even though all the people around wondered why Jesus would ever sit and eat with a tax collector. But Jesus knew this was the place to be. This was like Holy Communion. As Jesus' time in Judea drew to a close and he came close to Jerusalem, he stopped in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, and they had supper together. Suddenly, a woman 
that people did not know came into the room carrying a beautiful alabaster jar of perfume. She opened it up and poured it over the top of Jesus' head. Huh, the disciples were angry and said, why did you waste that? That, that uh, ointment, that perfume could have been sold for a lot of money to feed the poor. And Jesus turned to them and rebuked his disciples and said, do not trouble this woman. She has done a good thing. She has anointed my body for burial. This happened to Jesus another time when he was in Bethany, when he was staying at the house of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. This time, it was Mary who brought ointment and poured it all over his hot and dusty feet to soothe them. Martha was in the kitchen cooking and the brother Lazarus was there too, the one that Jesus had raised from the dead. But this time, in this house, at Simon's house, the disciples were still feeling very much that the woman had wasted this perfume. And so Jesus said, I tell you truly, whenever my story is told, the story of this woman will be told too, and her good heart, and what she has done for me. Now Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem. They had a last supper together. Jesus was arrested and tried and put to death on a cross and buried in this cave. The huge stone was rolled in front like a locked door. And on Holy Saturday, a cloud overshadowed the darkness. And on the Sunday morning, the first Easter, the women who came to the tomb found that Jesus was not there any longer, but that he was with them in a different way, a new way, as he is with us today. <laughs> so, beginning, middle, and that is really a new beginning. It's now time to say goodbye for this week and for the blessing. Are you ready? The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. Ready to sing with me? Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Thanks for coming to Godly Play. Have a great week. See you next week. Bye.